Hey there, this is Marissa with Marissa Moments Podcast, Healing While I Heal, where I share real life stories and their divine healing translations. So let's just get straight into it. I have no clue why, but spirit just brought back into my recollection um, when I was um, engagement ring shopping. Well, not engagement ring because I don't, I never got an engagement ring because I just, I just don't see the value in it, honestly. That's just a personal decision. So I, we were searching for a wedding band, which was like slash engagement, slash whatever you want to call it, right? And um, so we go to what's known as like Jewelers Row in Chicago. And the very first place we go into, I see this wedding band and it has like diamonds on it. You know, it's not like overpowering. It's nothing big. It's nothing like grandiose, but it is nice and blingy and pretty and and simple, right? So classy, elegant, all of these things. I try it on. I love it, but I'm like, okay, this is the first ring I'm trying on. There's no way. So I'm like, okay, you know what? Let's put it to the side. I want to keep looking. So we see another one, big hunky diamond rocks. And it was like, oh my God, it pulled me in. You know, it's like diamonds are shiny, right? So it's kind of like a moth to the flame, right? You're just like mesmerized by all of the different facets of it and the way it catches the light and all of those things, right? At least that's the way we've been programmed because the diamond is what? Supposedly a girl's best friend. Unless you sleep with a big rock on and then you wake up with a scratch on your face. But that's a whole nother story. Anywho, let's focus. So I'm out there looking, my my soon-to-be husband and a very good friend of ours. And um, our, our daughter, our, well, our oldest daughter um, at the time was with us, right? And um, we're looking, going around, try all these different rings. And then I end up, of course, coming back to the very first place that we went to and trying the band on again. And I'm like, okay, you know what? This is it. I love this ring. This is my ring. I love it. I'm obsessed with it. I have to have it. This is it. And so the jeweler, bless her heart, was like, well, okay, let's make sure that we get the sizing correct. And I actually believe that it was the correct size. Like it was totally meant for me in hindsight, of course, Captain Hindsight to the rescue, hindsight being 2020 and all, right? So anyway, so as I'm getting sized and making sure that the ring fits um, properly, the woman is like, oh, you have no knuckles. And I was like, what? (laughs) And she repeated it. You have no knuckles. And then her daughter kind of peeks out from behind her. She's like, that's okay. I don't have any knuckles either. And I'm looking down at my hands and I was like, wow, I never realized I had no knuckles until this very moment while I am searching for my wedding band for forever. Great. Right. And then in the back of my mind, I'm like, (laughs) you know, my husband and a friend of ours and I were like kind of joking secretly. We're like, well, if I don't have any knuckles, how come I can make this knuckle sandwich? You know, pow. I'm just kidding. There's no nonviolence. I'm a nonviolent person, but I do have intrusive thoughts sometimes that speak otherwise. But anyway, so this is my experience of ring shopping. And again, it's just another point as to why I call it Marissa moments, because I mean, a lot of times it's like, okay, who else does this stuff happen to? Who else is told they have no knuckles when they're looking for like one of the most important pieces of jewelry in their life, right? Like, oh, thank you for the memory, ma'am. Anywho, now let's get to the healing translation part, because of course, that's just a funny story in itself. Well, the thing of it is, at the time, I didn't necessarily think it was that funny. I, I didn't find too much humor in it. I was, I mean, I I didn't feel as if I was like wanting to fight anyone because I never get that feeling. <laughs> you know, I'm not in high school. So I don't want to resort to physical violence ever, even though my intrusive thoughts may say otherwise sometimes, right? My intrusive thoughts choose violence. I do not. Anywho, the point being is we have to make the situation and circumstance what we choose to make of it, it would have been easy for me to sink into a slump and then refuse actually to get the ring of my dreams just because of a a careless statement. I could have allowed my emotions to overpower me and then block my own blessings from being able to receive a, a beautiful ring that I still love to this day and I'm obsessed with 
just because I, I chose to allow offense to override a blessing, right? Or a potential blessing. I hope you're picking up what I'm putting down. The Again, the bottom line to this, and I know I keep saying bottom line to this, but the bottom line to the bottom line is we can't always allow our emotions to overtake us. We can't always allow the offense to be greater than the blessing. We have to go beyond, you know, what do they say? You have to rise above. If you want to soar with the eagles, why are you dealing with the chickens on the ground? Let them cluck about. You are soaring way too high to be mixed up in something that is none of your business or nothing that is of concern to you. Remind yourself and remind yourself often, is this going to be important tomorrow? Is it going to be important five days from now? Is it going to be important 10 years from now? And if the answer is no, then let it go. Because it doesn't have a direct impact on your potential for blessings. If it doesn't have a direct impact on your actual mental state, then keep it moving. There's a lot of potential detours and a lot of potential things that can stand in your way and block your blessings by just allowing you to be your own worst enemy. So <laughs> the next time somebody tells you you have no knuckles, just laugh it off and get the ring anyway. And then let it shine. And that's it. And if this message resonates, then that means it is for you. And if not, that's cool too. Just keep it pushing. Either way, I thank you for listening and I wish you the very, very, very best day ever. Until next time, you know the vibes. Peace. Oh, and by the way, don't forget to check me out on all social media. I'm basically everywhere you probably shouldn't be. But when you look me up, just remember it is Marissa moments. And that is Marissa with one S because there is only one me. So until next time, happy healing.